The Squire, Troy Sanders Signature Jaguar Bass. So this bass is really something different. I think it was only made for a couple years. There's both a Fender version and a Squire version and they are different in their own retrospects besides just the standard better hardware and better pickup sort of thing. They both have completely different features. They are only made for a couple years it seems like and there's not a whole lot of information on the Squire one at least, at least from what I could really look into. There's not even an official page for it on Fender's website. But this Jaguar bass is really something special. An insanely beautiful silver burst finish, pickups that actually sound really good for a Squire. It's got block inlays as well as a little unique touch where I don't think I've seen this in any other bass besides this one but one of the knobs is actually a bass booster. Just in case you don't know, Troy Sanders is the bassist and singer for one of today's greatest metal bands really and that is Mastodon. They have a lot of just crazy chuggy really just stoner-esque riffs mixed with a lot of different other things that just make them really unique and extremely signature. So it's really cool that Troy got the opportunity with Fender to make his own signature line. Starting with the body you have a classic Jaguar style made of bass wood. It has a really great weight to it, but it's not too heavy as well. You have an insanely beautiful silver burst finish, which really just stands out completely on its own. And it's seriously one of the best features of this bass. Now the bridge on this bass is one that I feel Squire uses on a majority of their models. Well, at least they're, they're more high-end models, I'm assuming. Because it doesn't, there's nothing really inherently special about it, but it gets the job done, it stays in tune, and really does what it needs to. Now again, because there's not a lot of information about this bass online, I'm just assuming that these are Squire's own pickups that they make. And so they don't sound bad, they actually sound pretty good. You get a nice round sound, but it's just nothing special to them. And what's really nice is with the tone controls that you have, you have individual volume knobs where you can really switch between what exact sound you're looking for. And now moving on to your control plate, this is where it gets a little weird. Now you have two volume knobs, one for your neck pickup, one for your bridge pickup. Then your third knob is actually an active bass boost, which is really different and again, I don't think I've seen this in any other bass before. Basically when it's all the way down you have your standard sound, but you can knock it up and really get a nice boost to your low end, which can be really awesome. <laughs> You just don't want to push it up too much because then it gets completely out of hand and just really makes the bass sound useless. So I don't think it's meant to be dimed all the way, but it's a nice feature that can actually add quite a bit of nice boost to your overall low end. Then after the bass boost knob, you have your regular tone control on top of that. So there's a lot of different ways to go ahead and use this bass. With the two different volume knobs, you're able to really set the pickups how you want them. And then with the bass boost as well, you can make up for any loss of it if you turn down the P bass a little bit, but you still want that nice low end added to it. Moving up, you have a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard as well as block inlays. And it looks so good and it feels great too. It's got a regular C-shaped neck and a regular 9.25 radius to it, but it just feels so great in your hands. Then you get to the painted black headstock that has a regular, I'm pretty sure, just plastic cheap nut to it, which does the job as well as the tuners too. I'm pretty sure these are just Squire's regular ones, but I haven't had any trouble with them at all. Then at the very top of it, you see Mastodon's remission logo just to make sure that you know that it's Troy Sanders' signature one. So there's a lot I really don't know about this bass. Specific specs that are for it, as well as really how long this was available for. I was lucky enough to pick this off of my local Craigslist 
for I think 250 bucks and it's in fantastic condition. But there's not a lot of them online, at least for the Squire ones. When you see the Fender ones, they're still in their thousand dollar range. But for the Squire ones, I haven't even been able to find any really just recently purchased or recently sold ones either on the used market. So there's a lot of weirdness to this bass, but I think that makes it even just, you know, more of a unique item. So there's really a lot to love about this Squire Troy Sanders signature bass. And it's just so weird, so unique, and it has a lot of great features to it. From the silver burst finish, to the great feeling neck that has the great block inlays, to that really unique and really weird bass boost knob on it. It's just a lot of fun to play around with, and again, it feels so great. I love the nice, just gnarly sounds you can get with it, and it's just a great bass. I have no idea really what the going price for this is used, and I don't even know how much it was when it was brand new, but it's just a great bass overall. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you like this content and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel as well, head over to my Patreon page for all kinds of cool behind the scenes stuff as well as giveaways. Thank you all so much for watching as always, and I'll see you all next time.